Hi, I'm Natalie and today we're making a gluten-free pie crust and optional, if you like, you can make it also a vegan gluten-free pie crust and it's very very easy. The only thing you have to substitute is butter with a vegan baking substitute like Earth Balance or Stork in Ireland and Great Britain. And this gluten-free pie crust is so delicious that it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. Pie crust is an art form for me. I did not grow up with pie crust. I mean, there are no pie crusts in Germany. So when I encountered pies in a small diner in Missouri, and I put my fork into this flaky crust with this nice apple filling, it was love at first sight. It was fruit with flakiness surrounding crust. And then certainly whipped cream because I love whipped cream. But that was just one of those best flavor combinations. You can make pie crust with any fancy tools and you can just use a fork for that. And I'm definitely going to show you how to make a pie crust with a fork in a different video. But today I'm going to show you how to make your life much, much easier, especially if you use butter and not a vegan substitute with using a food processor. And if you'd like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited. And so it's free if you have that subscription and it's called gluten-free sugar gazelle. Let's get back to the recipe. And I need some chilled water to make my pie crust. And what I did was I added some ice cube to the water and chilled it and now I have nice ice cold water. So what you're gonna do with the food processor is you're gonna use the chopping blade. That works best, especially if you use butter. And I'm gonna add now 300 grams of my pie crust flour combination. I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt and 500 grams of white sugar, which is about a quarter cup. And then I like to quick blend the flour combination. Now the ingredients are well combined in the food processor and I'm gonna to start to add the butter. And for that I need to prep the butter or the vegan substitute and I'm going to measure around 170 grams of vegan substitute since this one will be a vegan pie. And I'm going to cut it now into cubes. By the way, if you add a little bit more butter, that's not a problem. And as I mentioned is, if you work with vegan butter, please make sure it is vegan butter which you can use for baking. Uh, margarine and so on, which might be vegan as well, is way too soft. So just double check that whatever vegan substitute you use, it is made for baking. And ideally for vegan pie crust, you would use organic vegetable shortening because that creates a very nice flaky pie crust. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of that vegan butter substitute and I'm going to pulse my food processor. It's good to pulse with your food processor for like 10, 20 seconds because you're quickly chopping up the butter instead of like combining it. And I'm going to repeat this process. I'm going to add some butter, then I'm going to pulse my food processor for 10, 15 seconds. Add some more butter and then I'm again pulsing my food processor and I'm going to repeat the same process until all the butter is gone. So now we want to add some water to it. And I normally measure up a quarter cup, but I may not use the entire quarter cup. I have tried also other water substitutes like vodka instead, hoping it would create bigger flakes. But the only thing that really creates bigger flakes is using shortening. I add slowly the cold water and see how the consistency changes. And you can see here how some of the butter flakes are there already. Before I added more water to it, I actually pulsed the food processor a little bit more and I started to see how it formed small little butter balls really in my food processor, which is good. I'm very cautious how much water I add to pie crust because if I add too much, it becomes too moist and too soft and I'm not forming enough flakes. You can see how big those butter balls are, so it's actually good that I didn't add more water. I'm going to pulse the butter balls again until they form bigger lumps. I'm going to transfer all the lumps into an empty bowl where I'm going to form the pie dough. I'm going to combine now the pie crust with my hands. You want to handle the pie crust as little as possible to prevent melting the butter with your hands. But I want to do it really fast and try to touch the dough as little as possible. 
So here's now my vegan pie crust dough and I'm gonna let it rest now for 30 minutes to two hours in the fridge. I'm also gonna quickly show you how much more difficult it is to make pie crust with actual butter than using the vegetarian or vegan butter substitute or using organic shortening. One thing about butter is certainly it is much harder. I mean, you can see how I can slice the ice cold butter and it, how it keeps its shape compared to the vegan substitute. I still have to cut the same cubes. So that's about 170 grams of butter. And I'm gonna add some of the butter to the food processor. And quickly pulse the food processor. Breaking down the butter with the food processor is certainly much, much easier than if you have to do it with the fork. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the vegan substitute. I'm gonna add some butter, I'm gonna pulse for 10 to 15 seconds, and I'm gonna repeat this process until all the butter is gone. I'm gonna now transfer the lumps into an empty bowl and press with my hand briefly together the pie crust dough. Okay, here's the pie crust and I'm gonna chill it now for at least 30 minutes. I like to normally chill the pie crust overnight, especially if I have the time for it. And another thing you can do certainly with pie crust is you can freeze it. And if I plan to freeze my dough, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it up in parchment paper, put it in a plastic bag and freeze it. So after my pie dough has chilled for two, three hours or overnight, I'm gonna take it out of the fridge and start making my pie with it. And I'm gonna show you a few recipes in the upcoming weeks on it, but uh, let's get started on it. So what you do is you roll it out uh, between parchment paper, you put it into pie pan, you add your filling, and then you need to close your pie depending on what pie you're deciding on making. For this pie example, I decided to use my cookie cutters and cut out a bunch of shapes and decorate the top of it. And then the last thing I have to do before I can bake it is I need to make my pie shield. So I quick make my own pie shield out of aluminum foil and I'm going to show you how to do it in my strawberry rhubarb pie recipe. And now you would just bake the pie in the oven and your pie is ready. I also want to show you how to freeze an entire gluten-free pie because you may get into the situation where you have a big event coming up and you need to have multiple pies and just don't have the time to prepare them all in advance. So what you can do is you prepare an entire pie as you would do with any other pies and then you just freeze it. And I'm gonna quick show you how to do that. The only thing I have to do is cover it in saran wrap and then freeze it. So I'm gonna unwrap the pie. And I'm gonna pop now the frozen pie for about 15 to 20 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is I think close to 200 degrees Celsius, for about 50 to 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna turn down the oven for another 40 to 50 minutes to 325 degrees, which is around 170 degrees Celsius. And then after that, I'm gonna remove the pie shield, bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes at the same temperature, and then your pie is ready. And here is the tasty, yummy strawberry rhubarb pie. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas, which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.